Endometriosis is a chronic disease that affects about 10% of women and girls of reproductive age globally, and is sometimes referred to as a modern epidemic. It is a common condition. In detail, it affects an estimated 5% to 10% of women and adolescents of reproductive age, 15 to 49 years, and up to 50% of women who are infertile. Between 50% and 80% of women with pelvic pain have endometriosis. In this video, we will talk about this disease, endometriosis, by answering these questions. What is endometriosis? What causes endometriosis? Symptoms of endometriosis. Does endometriosis cause infertility problems? How's it treated? What is endometriosis? According to WHO, endometriosis is a disease in which tissue similar to the lining of the uterus grows outside the uterus. As you know, the uterus, or womb, is lined with a layer of tissue called the endometrium. During the menstrual cycle, hormones, including estrogen, which is produced by the ovaries, cause the endometrium to thicken, in preparation for supporting a fertilized egg. If an egg is not fertilized, the endometrium breaks down, and during a menstrual period, blood and endometrial tissue are shed from the uterus through the vagina. In someone with endometriosis, endometrial-like tissue grows outside the uterus. These growths may be referred to as implants, lesions, or nodules. When this tissue grows in the wrong places, it can cause painful symptoms that can impact not only your menstrual cycle, but also your daily life. Some people with endometriosis have trouble getting pregnant due to scarring and fallopian tube blockage as well. Some of the most common places you can develop endometriosis include the fallopian tubes, ligaments around the uterus, uterosacral ligaments, lining of the pelvic cavity, ovaries, outside surface of the uterus, space between the uterus and the rectum or bladder. More rarely, it can also grow on and around the bladder, cervix, intestines, rectum, stomach, abdomen, vagina or vulva. What causes endometriosis? The cause of endometriosis is unknown though the condition likely develops due to multiple factors. At present endometriosis is thought to arise due to retrograde menstruation is when menstrual blood containing endometrial cells flows back through the fallopian tubes and into the pelvic cavity at the time that blood is flowing out of the body through the cervix and vagina during periods. Retrograde menstruation can result in endometrial-like cells being deposited outside the uterus, where they can implant and grow. Cellular metaplasia is when cells change from one form to another. Cells outside the uterus change into endometrial-like cells and start to grow. Stem cells can give rise to the disease, which then spreads through the body via blood and lymphatic vessels. Other factors may also contribute to the growth or persistence of ectopic endometrial tissue. For example, endometriosis is known to be dependent on estrogen, which increases the inflammation, growth, and pain associated with the disease. However, the relationship between estrogen and endometriosis is complex since the absence of estrogen does not always mean the absence of endometriosis. Symptoms of endometriosis There are many symptoms of endometriosis, but the most common is pelvic pain. This pain can be intense or mild. Symptoms often feel worse just before and during your period due to inflammation brought on by the hormonal changes that occur at that time. Symptoms of endometriosis include very painful menstrual cramps. Abdominal pain or back pain during your period or in between periods. Heavy bleeding during periods or spotting, light bleeding, 
between periods. Pain during sex, dyspareunia. Infertility. Pain when pooping or peeing. Stomach problems like diarrhea, constipation, or bloating. You can also have no symptoms of endometriosis. Sometimes, you can have it and not know until you're unable to get pregnant. Endometriosis and Infertility Endometriosis is one of the most common conditions linked to female infertility. The American Society for Reproductive Medicine found that 24% to 50% of women with infertility have endometriosis. Mild to moderate cases of endometriosis may only cause temporary infertility. Surgery to remove the endometrial tissue can help a woman become pregnant. Doctors don't know exactly how endometriosis affects fertility. Scar tissue from endometriosis may affect the release of eggs from the ovaries or block the path of the egg through the fallopian tube so it cannot get to the uterus. Endometriosis may also damage sperm or fertilized eggs before they implant in the uterus. Many women with endometriosis or endometriosis-related infertility can still get pregnant and carry a successful pregnancy. There are treatment options, including fertility preservation and in vitro fertilization, IVF, that may help women become pregnant. Talk to your doctor about your fertility goals when discussing your endometriosis treatment plan. How's it treated? In many cases, your treatment plan will focus primarily on managing your pain and improving fertility issues, if you're planning on a future pregnancy. Medication and surgery, or both, are possible treatment options. Medications Medications are typically the first-line treatment for endometriosis. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, and acetaminophen are used to help relieve endometriosis-related pain. NSAIDs are available over-the-counter and by prescription. These medications may be used in combination with other treatments, such as birth control pills. Combined, estrogen-progestin, contraceptives are often the first-line treatment, along with NSAIDs or acetaminophen, for women with pain caused by endometriosis. These contraceptives include the birth control pill, sometimes called combined oral contraceptive pills, patches, and vaginal rings. Estrogen progestin contraceptives work by suppressing the ovaries, which may slow the progression of the condition and help reduce pain and menstrual bleeding. Progestin, a synthetic form of the hormone progesterone, may be used by women who cannot or do not want to use estrogen progestin contraceptives. Drugs in this category include norethindrone and medroxaprogesterone. They work by shrinking endometrial growths. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone, GnRH, agonists work by suppressing the ovaries, thereby lowering estrogen levels. They help shrink endometrial growths and reduce menstruation and endometriosis-related pain. Examples include luprolide, given by injection, and nephrolin, a nasal spray. GnRH agonists may cause side effects such as hot flashes, vaginal dryness, reduced libido, and mood swings, among others. These side effects may be lessened by the use of norethindrone, a progestin, or an estrogen progestin contraceptive. The use of these or other medications to reduce side effects is known as ADBAC therapy. GnRH antagonists also work by lowering estrogen levels. They can help reduce pelvic pain and lessen heavy bleeding during periods. They may be used to treat people who do not respond well to NSAIDs, estrogen progestin contraceptives, or progestins. Examples include elagolex and relugolex. These agents are oral as opposed to the agonists, which are given as an injection. Danazol helps reduce endometriosis-caused pain. It resembles testosterone and therefore can cause side effects, including acne, hirsutism, excessive hair growth in women, and a deepening of the voice. Because of these side effects, Danazol is not widely used. 
Aromatase inhibitors, AIs, work by lowering estrogen levels, helping to reduce pain. Long-term use of AIs can cause bone loss and the development of ovarian cysts. They cannot be used alone and are often added to other hormonal treatments when those are not fully effective. Surgery is sometimes used to remove endometriosis lesions, adhesions, and scar tissues. Laparoscopic surgery, using a small camera to visualize inside the body, allows doctors to keep incisions small. Thank you for listening to all the information we want to introduce to you in this video. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe for the HeInfo channel.